Okay, in the last uh, video I talked a little bit about my external power source. Um, I found a gentleman, well the same gentleman that, that put my uh, system into that panel for me. He specializes in custom panels, but he also makes these battery boxes um, that are just great for a system like this or any kind of system that uses an external power source. Um, you know, 12 to 24 volts. Um, you'll see here it's in a Seahorse 300 series case. It's just it's a little bit smaller than the 520s. Um, and what's nice about the system is you can alternate between 12 and 24 volts. So if you're using a system that can only handle 12 volts, you've got 12 volts. If you're using a system that can handle 24, you can use 24. The reason that I like this feature for my system is for continuity testing. Um, like I said earlier, with continuity testing, it's only sending like a fraction of the juice out to your e-match or whatever it is just to see if it can get a signal to come back okay so to prevent anything from happening um, I like to test in 20 in uh, 12 volt mode I shoot my shows in 24 volt mode but I like to test in 12 volt just so there's less juice going out there less possibility of anything happening so you can just flip it to 12 volt mode you see right here that the uh, voltage meter shows you what the charge on your battery is. You, you've got 12.6 volts, you're in good shape, you're ready to shoot your show. Another nice feature he did was he put this switch here. Like I said, some systems can't handle 24 volts, so he's made it basically impossible for you to unintentionally knock this switch. Say you're shooting a show with a 12 volt system, um, you can't accidentally bump this switch and have it go into 24 volt mode. He's made it, he's put a switch on it to where you have to lift it up and then move it and it's just you're not going to accidentally uh, bump it into the wrong voltage uh, to charge it uh, basically there's a battery here and there's a battery here uh, to charge it you just flip to charge number one you plug your charger in flip it over to number one it charges your number one battery then when that's done charging you flip it to number two charges number two battery and that's it I mean it couldn't be more simple and it's just a really really handy uh, battery box to have to hook it up Um, he supplies a little cable with the battery box. It's just a uh, cable with a positive and a negative end on it. So all you got to do, you know, plug this into your battery box. When you get out to the field, when you're ready to test or shoot, um, and you plug this into your system, and that's going to give it power. So now. You decide whether you want 12 volts or 24 volts for testing. Like I said earlier, we're only going to do 12 volts. So just go ahead and select 12 volts on your battery box. Again, you can check your meter. It says 12.6 volts. Okay. So for my particular system, I'm going to kind of try to zoom over to the, be able to show you both at once here. Um, we're going to arm. We're going to give power to the system. There you can see that we had a light light up. That means we've got power going to the system. Now we're in neither test nor arm mode. So if we want to do some continuity testing, we're going to flip. We've only got one slat hooked up. So there's no sense in flipping all three of the switches to test mode because we know that we've only got one hooked up. That happens to be A1 through 5. We're on A here. So we're going to flip this to test mode. Okay. So now when we push number 1, we should, if we have continuity, get a light right here. And there you have it. You can see that that light lights up and we've got continuity. Uh, I did have him also put a light on the buttons here, put an LED on the buttons. So I know when I've hit the button, there's nothing wrong with the button that we also have, um, that the button's working properly, okay? Like I said earlier, it, say, it does send a low voltage um, surge out to your slat so it can tell if we have continuity so you see when I hit number one it lights up that light right back there number one number two you can see it lights up number two number three okay now here we hit number three on the system you see we hit it and there's no continuity so now we got a problem so let's check and we'll see. Well, checking 
the slat, we can tell that A3, we had nothing hooked up to. So we have no problem, we just know that there's nothing hooked up there to give us continuity. Um, four, you see four is lighting up, and it's lighting up on the panel. Now, like I said, if we had all three hooked up, you hit number four, it's going to give us A4, E4, and I4. It's going to have all three of these are going to be lit up. Um, so that that's just one of the the things that I like about the system is the continuity testing and the and the, the options that you have as far as turning on and off your uh, stations and uh, you know however you want to do it you can do it. The only bad thing about the whole system is the lack of availability of the cables. Uh, you got to make your own cables. And you know I used 185 thermostat cable. It's 18 gauge, five wire thermostat cable to go into the DB9s, and uh, it's just kind of ghetto looking. Just kind of looks bad, but you can't. You know, re you really can't shoot. A, a, you know, you could get a 22 gauge or a 24 gauge cable to run from your box to your slat, but you can't you're going to have too much voltage drop by the time you get out to your slat you're going to lose too much power it's not going to be worth it so you know with this system a bad part of it is definitely the cables and the lack of availability you have to make your own so that's a little bit about the system um, you know and like I mentioned you've got a 120 Q system uh, there are a few things that you can do to expand it kinda one of the things that you can do to get yourself more cues is a sequencer. Um, here you can see that we have just a little sequencer here. Um, it, this has got an internal power source in it. Uh, it's two 9 volt batteries so it's an 18 volt sequencer. Um, again, you know, you, you could use the battery box for this if you needed to. If you, do, if you only needed a sequencer um, and you didn't, and it wasn't an internal battery sequencer, you could, um, on the side of it, you've got an option for 9 volt or external battery. Um, you would just have to have the right plug, and then you would plug the, the battery box into that, and there you'd have, you know, it's just, you, you can use that battery box for just about anything. But back to the sequencer. Um, these are about the easiest sequencers I've ever seen to use. They just couldn't be any more simple. Um, on the side of them, they've got, uh, you select what battery source you're going to use. We're going to use two 9-volt batteries, okay? Um, they've got a test mode that is just, you know, real simple. We'll hook a couple LEDs up here so we can see the test mode. Um, so we've got we've got something hooked into two and four, and you can see both LEDs are lit. Um, so we can see immediately that when we flip it into test mode, you got continuity on two and four. Okay. Um, the, the reason I say this is so easy to use, it, it has it right here. Your your delay between cues is right here. If you want it set to 1.5 seconds, you just put it right there, and you're done. Two seconds, you push that. Two and a half, three, three and a half, four. So if you want this set to four seconds, then that's all you have to do. Then all you have to do is go from one cue, any cue you want on your system, into here. It's going to send it the voltage it needs, and it's going to start the sequence immediately. You know, so there, this is a little six cue sequencer that we're using. Um, that I have got a few of these. I've also got a little nicer. Um, 10 q and these I just put again in the seahorse cases just to kind of protect them um, and this is a 10 q sequencer which uh, you know it's just got it's 10 shot it's got an input and an output so if you've got several of these you can run just from one queue any queue on your system into here and then once it runs through the 10 queues this is basically an 11th queue and this will send juice from here to your next sequencer and you could have say 10 of these hooked up and that's a hundred extra cues that you would end up having um, 
So, you know, your possibilities are endless. Just because you have a 120Q system most certainly doesn't mean that you only have 120Qs to utilize. These little sequencers go up to, I think, 9.9 .9 seconds or something. Uh, in between Qs is the highest you can go. Um, but, you know, there are some of them out there that will go to 9.99 .9 minutes. You know, you can go to almost 10 minutes in between Qs. So, you know, if, if you want to use one Q and have it set for... You know, each cake you can figure, you know, is about 30, 45 seconds. Uh, you know, set it to 35 seconds, and every 35 seconds it's going to pop off one of your cues. That's an additional 10 cues that you've got just like that, you know. So the possibilities are endless. Um, buying a system like this would cost you much, much more than just to build it. And, you know, building them is fun. You can learn a lot, and you know if anything ever goes wrong with it, uh, if you have some sort of a malfunction or something like that, if you built it, the odds are you're going to be able to figure out what went wrong with it, um, and that's another big advantage to building your own. So I would definitely recommend building your own, and uh, it's not difficult. I don't know anything about electrical work, and I was able to build this. So if I can do it, I'm, I'm just sure anybody can. So. That's my firing system. I hope you liked it.